equals maybe, right? You see? So all, all we did is use the, the pattern we just saw, and then we just constructed, we did that pattern there, 20 volts. OK? So now, if I go back to that general formula that we derived, this is the formula of the equal potential difference, the potential difference between any two points of a charge. Here's another thing that we're going to do. We're going to define the equal potential at infinity to be 0. OK? Now, so far, notice I have been telling you if the voltage at this point is 8 volts. And then what are the potential of the other points? So we just took the difference, 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 difference. You know? So, but now, if I tell you that the equal potential at infinity is zero, I can no longer say that the equal potential over here is eight volts. Now I would have to find what is the equal potential here with respect to infinity. Okay? So the, that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna say, let the equal potential uh, at infinity be zero. So let's say R2 was my, uh, my, was my R at infinity. So, so what that's going to do is that's going to say uh, as uh, R2 goes to infinity, which is the R of the second point, as R2 goes to infinity, we're going to say let V2 go to 0. Let the potential at infinity be defined as 0. Then what happens, so this, uh, so this one goes to 0, and this one goes to 0. So in other words, my reference point from which I'm measuring equal potentials is going to be infinity. Okay? This is different than how we do with potential energy on the Earth. Uh, we say the potential energy on the ground is 0, or the potential energy in the center of the Earth is 0. Here we're doing a little different. We're saying the equal potential at infinity is zero. You do a similar thing in physics too when you learn uh, gravitational potential energy. We set the gravitational potential energy of a planet to be zero when it's at infinity, infinitely far away from the sun. It has no gravitational potential energy. Well, same thing here. When two charges are infinitely far apart, they should have no uh, potential energy between them. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So these two cancel, and then I get V1 is equal to KQ over R1. So now, from now on, then, I'm going to use the fact that the potential of a point charge is KQ over R1. If I want to find the potential of a continuous charge distribution like a rod, what am I going to do? And here's again going to come calculus, right? I'm going to take a little element here, a little element here. Let's say I want to find the equal potential right here. I'm going to say each one creates an equal potential here, and then integrate over all of them, right? So the So the potential of a continuous charge distribution is going to be KQ over R. So that's one of the next things we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to find a, 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 a potential of a continuous charge distribution using integration. We'll probably do that next time. And then I'll do different charge distributions like a rod, a uh, semicircular uh, arc, and stuff like that. So we'll learn how to do that. OK? So let's, using this point charge definition then, let's go back to that example. And now tell me the equal potential 
one meter away from this, two meters away, three meters away, four meters away, five meters away, right? So what would be the potential right here? Okay. So what we would do is we would say the potential of this at that is kq over r1, and then I have to add the potential of that to that point. Each one creates a potential there, and they add up. Now, here is what, what makes finding potential easier than finding electric field. There's no direction to it, right? So if I have, if I have, let's say, a complicated charge distribution, It could be as complicated as you want to make it. And you want, if I want to find the total potential here, created by all of them, how do I do it? Well, if I had asked you to find the electric field there, that's a complex problem. Each one has a different direction. So you have to find the direction, cancel the x components, cancel the y components, or add the x components, add the y components. But here, each, this one creates a potential there, kq over r1. A KQ over R5, this one would go KQ2 over R2, KQ4 over R4. So what would you do? You would simply just go summation of KQ sub I over R sub I from I equals 1 through N. All you would need to do is find the R, the each R, just calculate each R, and just simply add the potential created by each charge. That's it. You see? So finding the total potential of a bunch of point charges or, or of a bunch of objects put together is easy. Okay? So if I want to find the total potential here, I just say, OK, take the distance from uh, here to here. Take the distance from here to here. So what would that be here? That would be uh, kq. Well, since nano, it cancels. So it just gives me 9 over what? The distance from here to here was what? 5, right? And then the distance from here to here, so that's negative 9 over 1. So this is giving me the potential at that point if the potential at infinity is defined as 0. You see? So I'm no longer telling you this is 8 volts, find the other ones. You have to actually find it with respect to infinity. Okay. So what does it give you? Is that right? Seven point two volts, yeah. Okay, how about over here? By the way, you can you can go through the uh, the derivation. You can show that any point on this surface is seven point two volts. Actually, that's one of the homework problems. Uh, it says uh, show that the the equipotential surface of a certain charge distribution is like an ellipse or something. So show the equation of that uh, ellipse. So you can actually derive the general point here. This plus this is going to be all 7.2 volts, like that. All points of that ellipse. And you can go through the derivation of, and find the general equation of that ellipse. You see? So now, what's this going to be here? So this is a v total point 0.1, point 0.2, uh, v total of point 0.2, 9 over uh, 4 minus 9 over 2, um, uh, 1 quarter minus 1 half is what? Negative quarter, right? So negative um, 2.25.
right? 